Welcome to Beauty Rehab. I am so excited to talk to you today, and I am going to jump right into what today's topic is because I want to know, are you feeling fulfilled? Are you feeling like you are rocking your very best life every single day? I know this is a beauty show, but I want to know about everything, about every cell of your body because... I know that for me, I have to really keep in touch with how I am feeling about my life, about how I look, about how I am kind of navigating myself in the world, and I know that I am seeing it with my friends. I want you to stop right now and think about what are your friends doing? I have a couple friends right now, and I would say they're not... They're, they're not my closest friends, but they are pe- women who I am in school with or that I know, and a couple of them are having gigantic midlife crises, which I'm not, I'm, I'm not judging, but the way they are navigating them is making me crazy, and I want to stop and unpack this so we can figure out how we can help each other to get some tools so you can manage your midlife by being mindful of what is going on inside, outside, and what the repercussions are of what you are doing. Because my girlfriend who came to me and told me, and she didn't tell me, I mean, I saw it, all of a sudden she's getting her lips plumped up, she's very concerned about her hair color, she's getting really skinny, she's kind of doing all of the age-old things that we've heard about men doing for, you know, since since the word midlife crisis was kind of invented in, what, 1965, that men were doing where all of a sudden they've they're starting to color their hair. They're starting to get obsessed with their weight. They're starting to, you know, think about what their their kind of unrequited love or whatever it was. You know, my father went went, went through one, and um, I'm watching my girlfriends go through them, and they are blowing up. Really, obviously, their relationships need some work, but they are blowing them up, and they are destroying their children. And I know that these women, if they just stepped back a little bit and thought about being mindful of what is going on inside, they would not be making these crazy decisions to just get an apartment somewhere else or have an affair and lie so much, so much tangled lying that their daughters and their sons are nervous wrecks, failing school, I just feel like if we stop and we think about why you have a midlife crisis, why women are having them now more than ever, and what you can do mentally, physically, emotionally, sexually, and even for your own face, hair, body, to keep yourself mindful of what's happening in our midlife. So I'm going to later on in the later on in the show, I want to take a call, but later on in the show, I've got an expert. And she is a dear friend of mine who is a financial expert and I learned so much about from my own financial control issues that I got married and I give, you know, I do a joint checking account with my husband and I don't have my own money and what that does to me for my midlife. I want to talk about how you can feel more in control of your life, which might help you with different levels of your midlife. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was when we're managing our midlife. And we not, you may not be going through a crisis, ladies, but if you are, I want you to get on the phone right now and I want you to tell me about it. And I want you to call me, I want you to call uh, Lifestyle Talk Radio Network, 888-454-3378. 
888-454-3378. And I want you to call me and tell me what's going on with you and how we can help you and how you can help us. Okay. So what I want to talk about for your midlife, first and foremost, is if you're feeling unfulfilled, is it because you... You've been raising children, you've been juggling, you've lost sight of you as a girlfriend. You were someone, and we talked about this last week, you were a girl before you started dating your husband or your partner, before you had children, before you had a career, before you started juggling all the things that you juggle every single day, you were a girl who cared about your hair, who cared about your outfits, who cared about your toenails, whatever it was, you were a girl first. And I try to explain this to my children because my children, a lot of the time, will get upset when I go out to dinner with my husband, and I say to them when they're getting so upset about us leaving them for a date night, you want us to date. You want me to love being a girl, love being my independent self. I'm raising you to be independent girls. Of course I want you to have a fulfilling social life and a fulfilling marriage if that's what you want and a career. So you need to allow me to still nurture my girl, the Morgan from before. I want you to nurture the girl you were before, before the mother, before the partner, before the career, before all of that. I want you to nurture it. And what that means to me is looking in the mirror and consistently caring about what you see, liking it. Not just when you decide you've gone off a cliff and you just can't, you don't love your life, you hate your life, you're ready to implode the whole thing. On a daily basis, I want you to stop. Are you looking in the mirror right now? If you're not looking in the mirror, I want you to think about the image you want to have of you. And I want you to do whatever it takes to get there before the crisis. This might stop the crisis. And that means, is your hair starting to gray? Is your hair starting to get wiry? Do you need a new haircut? Do you have dingy teeth from drinking coffee or wine or whatever it is? Get a white strip. They're very cheap. You just use a toothpick to make sure you get in the nicks and crannies of your teeth and you use them three nights a week and all of a sudden you're going to have five shades whiter. Dingy teeth are a game changer. If you smile at someone and they've got dingy teeth, it, it's unacceptable. I want you to get a night cream. If your skin is not looking gorgeous and radiant, I want you to get an alpha hydroxy night cream or a retinol night cream. Usually skin kind of goes on either side. Either retinols work for you or alpha hydroxys work for you. If you're on the Internet, I want you to learn about what night creams do for you. They hyper exfoliate your skin so you have fresher, more beautiful, radiant skin in the morning. It doesn't matter whether you have wrinkles. Wrinkles are not bad. If we're going to have a Botox conversation, it will be only about the number 11 lines in the middle of your forehead. But I don't mind wrinkles because radiant skin trumps wrinkles every single day. I want you to do those two things, dingy teeth, radiant skin. And I, but I want you to every day unpack what it looks like to love the image you're seeing in the mirror. And we're going to fix other things. Like I said, I've got an expert on today. Stay with me because I have an expert and I want to take some calls because I want you to understand how sexy and powerful it feels to have control over your finances. I know that doesn't sound sexy, but I will tell you, you're going to listen to Veronica Mille Beard, and you're going to hear how sexy it is. Because <laughs> she is a woman who is completely in charge of her own finances. She does, she's married. She has five kids. She's brilliant. She's gorgeous. She's sexy. And she believes this and has always lived it, and I will tell you, she never makes a decision based on what she has to do. It's about what she wants to do. It's a totally different mindset. So we're going to be talking to her in, I think, our third segment, but up next, I want to take a call. I want you guys to call me. Again, it's 888-454-3378. It's a lifestyle, lifestyle talk radio network and you can twitter 
If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Morgan Schick, M-O-R-G-E-N-S-C-H-I-C-K. If you want to follow on Instagram, every single day I do beauty tips. Easy beauty tips every single day, and you will be able to follow on Instagram, Morgan Schick, at Morgan Schick, M-O-R-G-E-N-S-C-H-I-C-K. Facebook, all the same. You can write me, ask me questions, but what I want you to do right now is call me. And we are going to be right back again. This is the Lifestyle Talk Radio Network. I'm Morgan Schick. Come right back. We're talking about managing our midlife today. Come right back. Bye-bye. Hi, welcome back. I'm Morgan Schick. This is Beauty Rehab. I want to jump in today and talk about what it's like to what what we've always been told is like a midlife crisis and what that means to us. What what does it mean to be 40 and feeling like when we grew up, we were always told we could be anything we wanted to be. And then in your 20s, you have kind of this, you know, inertia to be all, be all. Then in your 30s, you have this inertia to be all, but also, you know, maybe get a partner and have children and have a career and then you start juggling and then in your 40s you kind of start coming into your own and maybe not feeling so fulfilled and all of a sudden you start aging and you're wondering oh my gosh did I not did I not reach high enough did I pick the right partner all of this overwhelming juggling starts to make you feel like you're unfulfilled and maybe listless in your life and so I wanted to talk about that today in the context of if we see it coming and we see that we are feeling in the mirror, even in the mirror, in the bedroom, wherever it is, that we're not fulfilled, how can we address it before it becomes a crisis? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to see how you feel about yourself when you look in the mirror, when you are with your husband or your partner. Um, And I wanted to, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I wanted to reach out to a caller right away. Danica, are you there? I am. Hi, Danica. How are you? I'm great, thanks. I hope you are. I am. Thank you. So what do you think about the topic today? Oh, you know I love this. <laughs> this is my thing. So, I, I was listening to a, you speak about the financial piece that's coming up next, and it's so spot on because we, as women, always put ourselves last, and we feel our our finances have to go towards our children and go towards our bills and our husbands, and we, we feel like we're last on the list. Whereas if we were just able to go out and spend a little bit on that night cream you were talking about, Mm -hmm. that that can just empower us so much once we start seeing those results. We don't have to go overboard all at once. Just that that one little tweak at first or or, or the the, the teeth whiteners that you were talking about, it it makes such a big difference and it does really help. Well, tell me, what what of those things do you do? What of those, first of all, um, do you do you see any difference in how you feel about yourself versus ten years ago? Like, oh yeah. You know, literally, when you walk, look in the mirror, are you do, do all the dots connect? Are you feeling as good about how you look as where you are in your life and your career and all that kind of stuff? Actually, I am so much further along now than I was ten years ago. Is but I made that my purpose because. I had been that person who had the midlife crisis at a younger age. I had so much dysfunction and so much of my life that was so out of control that I knew if I didn't take steps to change me, my children were going to go through the same things that I was, and that was unacceptable. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but the payoff has been outstanding and were you mindful about how you did it because that's the biggest view I have with some of my friends they're Mm -hmm. just blowing up their lives 
and their kids are going to the repercussions that are going to be left for these children make me crazy. They, they didn't they didn't sign up for this. These kids did not mm-hmm. sign up for this. If you're unfulfilled in your life, fix it, but don't destroy your children in the process. I was not at the time. It was when I hit rock bottom personally that I said, "This is no, I can't." And so I set out to to fix me, like I said, so the the generational habits and thoughts that I carried with me would be broken with me. Okay. But it took a lot for me to be able to get there. I didn't know I was allowed to think outside the box. And I think that's a lot of the problem with women today. We're not comfortable thinking, oh, this is our life, this is how it's supposed to be, we have to do this. We that's have to so 1960s. Less. It's so 1960s. Oh, yeah. Now more women are in the workforce than men. And yeah. studies are showing that more women... Um, uh, more women are actually having midlife crises now than ever before. And I think it's because there are no tools. We were never taught that we were allowed to um, be be a, be sad or fix ourselves. We were just kind of like dutiful, dutiful wives and mothers, and we were just supposed to zip it. Um, Marsha Reynolds in Psychology Today said did a great article about kind of the midlife crisis, and that's one of the reasons why I thought that if you were – that's why I wanted to kind of break this down. If you have control of your finances, have control over your visual, have control of your sex life, have control. If you take the time to be assertive, not a bitch, but just assertive, you may be able to stop yourself from falling off that cliff that you said 10 years ago. You were like, I can't take it anymore. I got to stop. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so the, so the tools that you learned that you are teaching others, or what? Uh, it's very individual. When I work with people, I find out what their main issue is in that moment. Because one usually is piled upon another, upon another, upon another. And it's baby stepping. Because when we try to do too much, we get overwhelmed and shut down. And we end up right, right where we were or further down than before. Right. So for me, mine was eating disorders. Okay. And I really set out to understand what was causing it and how I can fix it. And I had to reach out to other people, not necessarily um, the healthiest ones because I didn't know any better. You know, at that point, I just reached out to anyone. Right. It took me a really long time to find the right person to connect with, but at least it was progress. Well, that's what you were saying about, and I totally agree with that, and that's one of the reasons why I give that very simple white strip Mm -hmm. tip, because I cannot tell you enough that when you smile at someone, when they smile back at you, and they have dingy teeth, or you have dingy teeth, and you look in the mirror, it really, it is a baby step that means so much, and that's why I also feel like if you just because I'm a beauty expert. I was a Ford model for 25 years. I was a makeup artist. I've written books. And I can tell you that when you live in a cocoon that you love, in the vehicle that your body and your image is, and that you love it, it changes how you navigate your world. Absolutely. And then you'll have the energy and the motivation to take control over, like, your finances or your sex life. I mean, when I feel more beautiful and when I feel in shape, I want to tell my husband what I want to do to shake things up in the bedroom. Like, I may need a shot of tequila to do it. (laughs) And I'm not a drinker, but every (laughs) once in a while I'll be like, I think I'm just going to, when we go on vacation, I'm like, okay, I think I'm just going to do this. And you know what? Call me crazy, but if it makes me just a little inhibited, that's what I go for. Danica, thank you so much for calling me. Next up, we're going to have Veronica Mila Beard, a financial expert. Stay with us. She is going to teach you how to be financially independent in seconds. You're going to love her. Stay with me. Be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in today. This is Beauty Rehab. I'm Morgan Schick. And today we're talking about managing your midlife. Now, I don't want to say your midlife crisis because not everybody's in a midlife crisis, but I do want to say taking control of what you can change about your life so you don't ever get in a crisis. 
I've seen a couple people who start to blow up women, friends, start to blow up their lives recently. And I thought, you know what? We gotta, we gotta stop this. And we gotta figure out physically, mentally, emotionally what we need to get a handle on so we can break down these little things so they don't become overwhelming in our lives, juggling our careers, our families, our, our partners. And one of the things that kept, that keeps me up at night is financial independence. So I asked a dear friend of mine who is a financial guru, and she is with me today. Her name is Veronica Mille Beard, and she is my financial guru. Veronica, are you there? Are you with me? Hi, Morgan. Hi. Thank you for thank you for being my expert on today's show because you really this is your wheelhouse. You I, I don't know about that. I think I think it can be very practical for everybody. Well, that's why it's your wheelhouse. You make it not you make it not intimidating. And with me, money is inter- finances, understanding the markets, all that kind of stuff is too intimidating. So I left it to my husband, and I lost control. And that's what. And I want you to tell tell the listeners why you have always been financially independent. Well, first of all, I think um, I love when Danica said thinking outside the box. Um, when I was um, two, I lost my father. So I was raised in a um, single mother household, and I have two brothers. So I immediately, I think, thought like a man. I thought like my brothers did, and I also witnessed my mother raise us, and I figured out early, my goodness, I'm going to have to make money in, in life. I have to get by because I'm watching this woman get by, and she was so dependent on my father, um, and I never wanted that that feeling. I always wanted to be in control of. I, I, I often said to my mother, "I'm not going to ever depend on anybody. I need that that control over my life, my finances, everything from a very young age." And it was really out of fear that I said to myself very early, "I've got to get this, get through this, get through this life, get make some money on my own." But beyond that. Um, you know, marriage for me has been complex because I was raised in a single household with a single mother. I didn't see sharing among a man and a woman. I didn't see how finances were laid out. So I had to really learn about relationships and how to share. And, and it's been sort of a different way of looking at it, as we said before, thinking outside the box. And I think a lot of what Danica was saying about control Women, men, everybody in life, if they want to be happy, they need to feel in control, even if it's over a little bit, whether it's about decisions over your children, where you're going to live, how you're going to live, um, whose, whose name is on the house that you own. Um, you know, if, if a woman feels like a man is splitting a house with them, if they own the house, and I know in marriage um, in a lot of states, if anything were to happen, yes, um, the woman would get half, for instance. But in a lot of situations, if the woman's name is not on the house, I don't think she feels like she's half of this marriage, half of the decision making. And so, it's kind so of going back. So, what's your first piece of advice for a woman who's listening to you, like who doesn't even, who knows the house isn't under her name, who doesn't, who's raising the kids at home and feels helpless, and so so she doesn't blow up her life and just go, okay, I can't take this anymore. Tell me one thing she should do today to make it so she feels more empowered. First of all, she's got to have a talk with her husband, and men need to be. You know, we, we can't just tell the man how it's going to be. I know a lot of women have, a, have an intimidation problem with their husbands, but the woman has to say to her husband, if I felt in control over a little more, like Danica was saying, if I could get my own bank account, just go out and save even, you know, a small, small amount each week from what is in the household money or what they can earn on the side, um, if they can actually control, even if they're going to be contributing to the household with that money, if they were able to manage that money and control it the way the man usually does, you know, we've all been raised where 
I think old school thinking is the man controls the budget. The man rations it out. The man puts the kids and the wife on an allowance. Well, what if the woman was in control of that a little bit, or at least in control of what little bit she could put away, put aside? Right. And, and, and so that's your first piece of advice, that. is getting a bank account and having that discussion. How do you have that discussion so your husband doesn't think you're already trying to leave? Like, that's my scariest thing. Is okay, that so I don't want my husband me? to think I'm trying to divorce him even because I just he doesn't understand why I would need this control. How do for I have me, that this conversation? This has been a work in progress for my entire marriage. I've been married, I forget how long, Morgan, 13 years? 14, I'm um, counting. <laughs> and I've had a relationship with my husband beyond that. We dated for two and were engaged for one. So it was a long time coming. And my whole marriage has been a work in progress. Um, you know, look, love you more. I will, if I feel, I think there, the old adage is, you know, women are attracted to power. Men are attracted to beauty. But women run around trying to be more beautiful, try to be more... Um, you know, in control of that part of it, which creates a lot of these eating disorders and, you know, control over their lives in that respect. But in reality, I think if you felt the respect, felt the empowerment from your loved one, from your husband, your wife, um, that is the ultimate feeling of love yeah. and sort of sexiness. I mean, when my husband says that, that, you know, he, he's so proud of me for, for what I've done. I don't even like the word proud because that's almost like, you know, degrading. It's, he's impressed with how much I've done or or he was so no, impressed with... No, he's definitely with... in awe. Every man I know is in awe of what your your financial, your prowess in the financial world. I mean, my husband knows Veronica and my husband thinks, like, why can't you be like Veronica? And I'm like, because uh, that's a... That's a it's a muscle I never learned to flex. I and, never and it's so had interesting a because muscle. Morgan, who is so in control of her <laughs> beauty and her happiness, has one last thing to do, which is she's <laughs> got to get a bank account. <laughs> I and, have a bank account now, but yeah, I learned well, that from you. <laughs> yeah, and she's got in her bank account, but she's also got to, you know, have a discussion with her husband, which is. You know, if I do go out and make some money, I would like to be able to manage it. I would like to learn how to manage it. I would like to, to contribute to this household and not feel 100% controlled. Um, and, and then work on other things like beauty. And, and I think if, if she feels like he is respecting her for that and is, and you have to sit down with your loved one and you have to say, look, I will be 10 times a better lover Ten times a better wife if you respect me the way I respect you financially I think so many more women would would if so many more men would be happier so many more women would not have these midlife so I, I am the telling you is that is why I asked you on this show today because these that is so sexy and having women hear that from you, and you guys can follow Veronica Mele Beard, and she, she's on, also Veronica Beard on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook, because you can see she's you know now a partner in a, a fashion line, but was a successful financial person first. This is sexiness to the nth degree, and I think that is so powerful, and that's why I wanted you guys to have her as a tool for you today, to see that I am I am a beauty expert. I know everything there is to know about being the most beautiful image you can be, the youngest you can look, all of that kind of stuff, but I still have my own issues. One of them is I don't feel financially secure with my knowledge, and that's what Veronica does. And listen to her, ladies. You can hear her. She's so badass with what she knows about finances that it's sexy. And, and it's not necessarily, listen, we can get into next time about learning a little bit about our economy, learning about places to put money, learning about how the, how the economy works. But oh, you're going to be back, Missy. For today, you're going to be back. Control. It's about yep. control of your life in more ways than just how you're looking and how skinny you are. This is about 
equality in your household. And it's Yay! Thank, Thank you, you Veronica. Me. Thank you so much for being on today. She's going to be back, you guys. Come back. Thank you for having we'll me. Be, you're so welcome. We'll be right back. Rehab, call me, 888-454-3378, and I'm going to take your calls with all next segment. This is Dee Rehab. I am Morgan Schick, and today's topic has been fantastic. It is called Managing Your Midlife. Not saying you're having a crisis, but what I want to do is avoid it. Avoid that at all costs. So what we're talking about today, and we were just talking with financial expert Veronica Mille Beard, was taking control over your financing. So having a conversation with your husband's uh, partner, significant other, if you are not in control of any of your ownership, finances, all of that, you lose, you don't, you're not your whole self. And it is very, it is very sexy. It is very powerful to be able to control your own destiny. And I believe that in my case, for sure, I am a hundred percent control over my own aging, my beauty, my image, all of that. But it was only until recently that I didn't give all of my paychecks to my husband. I felt like it was it was a pot, and we were just all putting it in there, and. I did feel like I wasn't making decisions in our financial life because I didn't know about finances as well as he did. And so Veronica Mille Beard taught me how to learn about financial independence, and it was so helpful. And I'm so grateful that she was, um, on, she was on today as our expert. So I want to get to the phone lines really quickly. Hi, Kimberly. Are you there? This is Morgan Schick. Yes, hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for calling in. What do you think about today's topic? Oh, I think it was great. Um, I would love to actually be able to bear my own finances. I am in control of my own and still am not in control of my own. <laughs> it's, it's baby steps. Monica, just the conversation or the just the bank account where you put a little bit in and then you get to make your own decisions. I, that's how I started. And it, it does make a big, it, it makes a difference when you decide, like, I'm going to buy this for my kids or I'm going to buy this for myself, even if it's just something little. Um, I had to learn that way. So if, it, don't think that you have to, like, get a mortgage or get a credit card or whatever it is. Those are all things that you can do later on. But just knowing that it's empowering and very sexy to be in control of your own finances is all I wanted you to be left with today, okay? Oh, Kimberly, I'm so sorry. I lost you. Try and call me back. It's 888-454-3378. But, but what Kimberly was just saying was exactly what we're talking about, about how when you don't have control over that, you may not even know that it's an issue. And when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about how to mediate your, let's say, being fulfilled. I think of it as your professional fulfillment. So if you're working in love with what you're doing, um, and then second, your emotional, and then your visual. So if you look in the mirror, how do you feel? And I'm hoping we have Kimberly back. Do we have Kimberly back? Yes. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you called back in. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. So tell me what you – so do you have a question for me or are – what, what's I going do. on in your life right now? Um, well, I do have a question, pretty much. Um, I had changed professions, and I have just turned 40. I live in Texas. And my question is pretty much is about beauty and the face and skin care. Um, what I'm trying to find out is if there's something that can be done. Uh, living out here in Texas, I know that every different state is different, and the weather changes can create different um, things that can occur to the face. Now, my right. face is a combination skin, so it breaks okay. out once to twice, probably every th two to three months maybe. Mm -hmm. And also, in the profession, I mean, I need to keep it youthful and clear all the time. Okay. So what I'm trying to find is if there's something out there, because I also speak a lot with my face. So I, I do a lot of facial expressions and have a lot of, like, the aging process starting. And I had it a long time now, so it's been going on for quite some time, even in my younger years. And I'm wondering if there's a product or any home regimens, anything that you would recommend that would keep the youth or, you know, start 
decreasing or minimizing right. those lines. Okay, so and let me ask support. you. I want to. I want to get to know your your get your own process a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, are you right now? Do you do a regular facial? Have you always done that? Do you touch your face a lot during the day? Do you um, wash your face in the morning with a cleanser? Do you wash at night? Do you use a night cream? Tell me some about that because that'll tell me where you can start. Now, I used to do a lot of that. Um, I cut back now to a basic Cetaphil, which okay, is just. Okay, so you use that at night? I do. I use it at night and in the morning okay, because I had to start getting morning. ready. Okay. Don't stop, don't use any cleanser in the morning. Just wash your face with water. Don't don't restrip your face. You clean it at night with Cetaphil. Then in the morning, just use regular water and don't use don't use a stripping agent again. You're gonna you're gonna have much more supple skin just from that. Okay. Oh, okay. Next up, Great. do you use a night cream with an alpha hydroxy or a retinol? Because at forty, you have to be using that every single night. I have tried. My friends, again, are a little bit limited, so I'm trying to find something that I could get that will be reasonable and also good for the skin. Okay. Olay Regenerous has an alpha hydroxy in it. So does a new from Avon. Those are okay. both within the, like, $15 range. Now, here's what everybody does wrong. They use too much. So when you're done washing your face at night, Kimberly, I want you to keep your face moist. I don't want you to dry it with a towel. I want you to take a tiny bit of that Regenerous or whatever the night cream is you're using. Don't do it around your eyes. Actually, if you're going to do any drying of your face, you can pat around your eyes so so whatever you use doesn't get into your eyes because alpha hydroxy or retinols will sting the eyes. And I want you to use some of the moisture that's on your face to help thin out your night cream. Okay. You will. It will take you twice as long. Nobody wants you to hear. Nobody wants me to tell you that because they want you to buy five bottles. I'm telling you right now, they all have water in them. Just it. It's going to keep your skin looking more supple if you use it. Okay. Okay. Great. I want you to do those two things, and then I want you to do another thing. Every there, you can get 99 cents. Um, facial masks, cleansing masks at any drugstore. I want you to do one once every two weeks. And if you don't want to use that, you can use a scrub with just a little bit of uh, avocado or olive oil or something like that that rehydrates your skin. But the most important thing I want you to do is never touch your face. Do you hear me? Never touch your Uh face. Kimberly, Danica, Veronica Mille Beard, I thank you for getting involved and helping us today. You are rock stars. Your calls, your advice, your sharing is what makes us better women. I will see you next time. Morgan Schick, Beauty Rehab, Lifestyle, Talk Radio Network. Come back, come off, and share always.